play some Battle Toads. It's thought of to be one of the most frustrating and difficult games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I don't know that that is true, um, but it has taken me longer to master this game than any game I have ever played, I think, in my entire life. I first started playing in March of 2023, and I did not beat the game until November of 2024. Now, I wasn't playing it daily or even weekly. Sometimes I go weeks without playing, but... Um, yeah. Took a while to learn. And even after all that time, I still think that the game is excellent. The game designers did a great job of mashing together a whole bunch of different genres and making it frustrating, but also very rewarding. So, th these flies are extra hit points, which I don't really need right now. So that guy jumping out of the wall and immediately swinging his axe at you is the first of many frustrating things in this game that you just don't know are going to happen until you memorize that they're there. And that would be another example. I don't know that that guy's ever hit me like that before. Oh my goodness. That's not a good start. Okay, so if you stand against this wall and then run and jump, you get that one up every time. If not, it's kind of hard to line up your guy with it. So I love that the first level boss, you don't ever really see the boss. You are looking from his perspective because it is so big that Nintendo couldn't handle the render on it. And then after you beat it, you again don't see the full boss, but you just see its pieces and parts falling around the toad as he jumps down into the next level. <clears throat> just a cool little touch. So this level, the Wookiee Hole, is a very important level in running this game. Because you can bounce these guys off of the wall and you earn a bunch of points doing so. Oh, and I got a 1-up there. So if you bounce them, I think it's 8 times, you get a 1-up. And the more 1-ups you get, the better. So at the top, those hearts are actually the extra lives that I have, and it stops counting at 5, but you do still keep earning them. So very quickly, I lose track of how many I actually have. And again, after... Uh-oh. Uh ah! Oh my gosh. I don't usually do that. After 100,000 points, you get a 1-up, as well as juggling these birds. These are much easier to juggle. And, of course, I missed the last one to get me that last one up there. There we go. So many times I've played through this level and got no 1-ups, and I just restart the game, because... You really do need these the extra lives throughout the game. <clears throat> I also love how different this level is than the first level. Where the first level is kind of like your traditional beat em up, this is like a completely different gameplay type. Uh -oh. And that's something that happens a lot throughout Battletoads. Oops. Where the levels just keep adding new things that you have to figure out and learn how to do. And that literally happens up and through the last level of the game. see if I can juggle this guy. Nope. Yeah, I'm not doing too good juggling this <laughs> this time around. Oh my goodness. This guy usually doesn't ever hit me.
Okay, I guess I'm just going to get a couple of one-ups, because this is the end of the level here. <laughs> I'm going to lose one right at the very end. Great. Yeah, that was uh, not my best showing in that level. And now for the infamous Turbo Tunnel, which, as a kid, this was as far in the game as I ever saw. And I do not think that I was alone with that. I think most people did not get past this level or did not get too far past the level. Okay, these little guys, Space Invader guys, steal your health. They gotta punch them and steal it back. So this level starts off very much like the first level. And you gotta be careful here because if you try to kick him, he you are if your toad's not too smart and he'll just jump right off the ledge there. Here we go. Alright, here we go. So this is why the level is unique and also frustrating. Simple enough, just dodge these guys back left and right, top to bottom, I mean. Okay, each time you cross one of those little finish lines, that is a checkpoint. So if you die, you start back at that checkpoint. And this is also the first level in the game that has checkpoints. Every The first and second level, if you die, you just start right back exactly where you died. And that's one frustration I have with Battletoads is it cannot make up its mind if it wants to have checkpoints or not checkpoints. The levels change constantly whether or not you respawn and then even sometimes in the same level like you'll respawn at the boss but not throughout the level. Okay, apparently I can't talk during this part because I'm not even in the hard part yet. You do not hit the ramps, you just let your fingers off the controller and just run into it and then you'll make the jump. And that took me forever to figure out. And that is in the middle of the path instead of the top of the bottom. actually have to jump here and sometimes I miss these jumps and I don't know how or why all right here we go fast part all right first try there was a warp zone if you hit the tenth wall I it's not worth it. I, I want to get through the game from beginning to end without the warps. So here's the obligatory oops, ice level in a Nintendo game where you have to relearn to walk because the floor's slippery. And each time you break one of those walls there, that becomes a checkpoint. Thank you, Mr. Fly. fall down too quick there you will hit that ice block all right <laughs> this part gave me way more trouble than I want to admit this little guy if he knocks you down you fall down and the screen does not scroll back down so it's like basically an automatic death But even though this is a platform level, like the first level, you return to checkpoints instead of respawning right where you died. 
So you can pick up that ice block and throw it over here, but I just sit and wait. It gives me a little breather while the snowman does all the hard work for me. Cut okay, checkpoint. And for some reason, that jump gets me about half the time. I don't know why. All the way against the wall. Jump. Wait. Jump. Uh, two. And throw. Okay. Jump and immediately duck. All right. Whatever. That snowman hits me way more than I want to admit to. Okay, now the game designers actually built something in that's useful. Grab that one up, and then this next section here, if you were to die, you respawn right before that one up, and you can just pick it up again, so it's like you never lose a life, which is amazing. Unfortunately, that section is very short, and once you get through it, then it's back to the hard part. All right. This is a very difficult jump here. You just barely tap A to get over that. If not, you will hit the ceiling and die. Duck. And here, again, we must wait for this guy to break the wall. It's three high, one low. And he's got to hit it ten times. So there's eight, nine, ten, and we're through. Boom. There's a check, or I'm sorry. A warp zone if you ride that guy back up to the top, but again, we're playing straight through. There's also a warp zone at the very beginning of the first stage, but you got to be really quick to get it, and I've never gotten it. But again, I just like to play straight through, so. All right, nice caverns are done, and now we're on to what is both the easiest and the hardest level for me. Surf City. I beat it the first time I ever played it. It isn't that difficult, but it is one of the only levels, and maybe the only level in the game, that features random things happening. So these logs are the same every time. But later in the level, there's some mines that you hit. Oh my, I gotta get this one up. There's some mines that you hit that will show up in the water, and they're in a different location every time. And sometimes the pattern is just way more difficult than it should be, and I always lose a couple lives there. It also is the first level in the game that has an on-screen boss. I always forget his name, but I want to say it's Ratfink. And you would think that he'd be the end boss, but no, he is a mid-level boss, because after you beat him, the level keeps going. And there's an easy way to beat him. The only way that, I, that I've that i ever beaten him, actually. And I'll show you that in just a second, because we're almost to him. So I could easily hit this guy with my pole, but I get more points when I ram him. And I want to get as many points as I can to maximize my extra life collections. Alright, there you go. Hit him against the wall and just keep doing this, and he's easy to knock out. If not, he jumps around the screen like a madman, and um, if he lands on you, it's a one-hit kill. Alrighty, and here is the part I was talking about that is random. All of these mines appear just wherever they want. And it gets faster because, of course, it does. way to the front of the screen to get that one up and then hope there's not a mine there. Three more mines to go. One, two, three. Boom. All right. And now for the most unique level in the game, Karnath's Lair, the Snake Pit. So the snake pit consists of four rooms with these snakes that come in and out of the walls. And your goal is to get to the out hole, I guess that's what it's called, in the top of the room. So this first room is almost like a tutorial, which again, 
gracious of the game designers not to just throw us into the hard part. So if you were to fall, you just have to catch that first snake and ride it back up again. So it all, all it costs is a few seconds. There's the out hole. But now there are spikes. So now if you were to fall in the wrong spot, you are going to lose a life. Luckily, the outdoor is a checkpoint, so you start back in the same room that you that you died on, which is good. As a kid, I remember my cousin Jamie being home from sick from school one day, and we would always go and stay at our grandparents' house when we were sick from school. And then I, um, if we weren't sick, we'd ride the bus to our grandparents' house after. So I rode the bus to my grandparents' house. My cousin Jamie was there, and he was playing Battletoads, and he was on this level. And that is the only time I ever remember seeing it. I have to assume, fast one, that he was using a game genie because as a child, I do not know how you could ever get this far in the game. Or maybe people are just way better gamers than I give them credit for, which is also a possibility. So this room is just full of spikes, so if you fall, that's pretty much it. You're starting the room over. And this is my least favorite jump in the level. Okay, this one, game designer trick. Your instinct tells you to try to jump over those spikes, but you can only jump over two spikes, not three, so you have to wait for the snake to loop around and grab it. Very unintuitive. Oh, fast one. Fast one again. Fast one again. And fast one again. I have absolutely jumped over that door before and had to do the whole room over again. So this is the last snake room. You have to do some leaps of faith there. And there is a trick here that I use because the last couple snakes are insanely difficult. So this next snake, there is a secret shortcut to the exit and I take it every time. And it's way easier than doing it the legit way, but it isn't foolproof because I have fallen here many times. All right, there we go. Awesome. Volkmeyer's Inferno. Hey, look, it's another level that looks like the Turbo Tunnel a little bit. And you even fight the same enemies, but now, for some reason, they die in one hit. So every, every level seems to have that one spot where just instinctively you do something because the game has taught you what to do before, and then if you do it here, you die. Which is, oh, there's a, a water gap there, just like the first two that I jumped over. Maybe I should jump over this one as well. But no, you have to wait for the, the log and then jump on the log. The good thing is a lot of these cheap tricks that the game designers implemented you only fall for them once. Okay, I was going to say that's a one-hit kill, and for some reason I always struggle timing that part correctly. And there's another section that here. got me again. Great, lost two lives there. And then here is the difficult part of this level. Yet another vehicle section! Yay! Like the turbo tunnel, it starts you off very slow and s steady, but immediately introduces stuff like this, which is frustrating. And then this. If those things shut on you, there's no way to get through them. You just die.
So after about 45 fireballs there is a one up and I was counting in my head. All right, same here. If we just hang in the bottom left corner here, most of these guys will miss you. You just have to watch for the the ones falling from the top that come all the way to the edge. There's another one up at the top of the screen here, but I always am too chicken to go get it. I'm going to try it, though. Oh, I got it! Haha! <laughs> this kind of makes like a M shape. And then three open. Over to the front for three more. Back to the front, back to the back, and back to the front. Trial and error. And then this is very unintuitive. You want to get up to the front of the screen. Because that the the interval between those last two is so difficult, you kind of have to move down and back to have enough time to get through it. Intruder excluder. This is the level that I. This is as far as I got in the game without practicing the later levels with the game genie. Let me rephrase that. I'm sorry. This is the last level that I beat without practicing the later levels on game genie. I did get through this level. And the reason is because you only get three continues, and I would get this far or to the next level and have very few lives left, and just, I'd only get one or two tries, and it wasn't enough to learn the level, and it takes so long to get back here. I really wanted to keep my little... Goodness, I got it usually not up there. Okay, so this is the last checkpoint in the level. Give me a couple of little flies here. Okay. I was getting ahead of myself. Timing of that jump is not very okay. That gas will kill you in one hit. That will suck you into the fan and kill you in one hit. for the final ascent of the level. Alright, this boss, when he lands, he shoots three bullets at ya. And if you, you can just duck under them and hit him. But if he lands on you, it is a one-hit kill. And then sometimes he jumps twice. If he, you get caught in his bullets, that's the end of you. Man. Getting impatient. Oh my gosh. 
Slow and steady wins the race. One more hit's gonna kill him, I know it is. Yeah. I'll let him knock out four of my lives real quick. Okay, this level, the Terra Tubes, is the farthest that I got. Duck. Another cheap shot from the developers. If you get too close to that guy, he blows up and kills you in one hit. So I try to stay clear. This is another level with checkpoints, so if you die, you go back to the checkpoint. But it is another level that does provide you with some extra lives right at the start of a checkpoint sometimes. Well, the last one anyway. Okay, there you go. Right, left, right. This is the part that I never got past. And it was because I'd only have one or two extra lives and just trying to remember the pattern of all of these wheels where everything is in this section here just it did me in and I was like, you know what? I'm doing a game genie. Again, right, left, right, left. And for the first time in the game, your toad is swimming. Oh. Those guys are always in random spots, and I could stop and, and hit him. Like that. But I sometimes just try to just go through. Okay, that literally was in the exact same spot, so that was nobody's fault but my own. Sometimes those guys come out of that hole quicker, and if they do, they just knock you right into the spikes. Swim section. Stop and punch this guy. Swim in section. Stop and punch that guy. Swim in section. Run from these guys. All right, well, good enough. Checkpoint. More gears. Okay, so the key here, if you fall and you start punching, your toad just, like, chills out there. Okay, that is a cheat. I admit it. You're not supposed to be able to get behind that wheel. And a lot of times I'll try it and die trying multiple times, but I find that much easier than doing this section legit. Alright, here's the last checkpoint in the level. And there is the secret one up. And by secret I mean right in front of your face. So if you die in this section, you can just grab that one up again and try again. And those ducks kill you in one hit. But they look so innocent. Alright, let's see if these fish and sharks are going to cooperate with me. Okay, that's good. And I usually just ignore this shark best to my ability. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. 
Every, okay, every time I play the game, I die in a spot I've literally never died before, and that was that was that spot. And now, because of that, I'm probably going to not even get to that spot again and have to do it ten more times. As anticipated. At least I got the one up. <laughs> I didn't get the one up. So I actually lost a life there. That's great. That's great. Oh my goodness. Getting all cocky thinking I was going to beat this level on the first try. And I'm sure this guy's not going to cooperate with me now. Oh. He did. Okay, now see if the shark cooperates with me. I'm trying not to get frustrated because it just gets harder from here. There are people who can beat this game, and by people I mean person, I think there's just one guy, without getting hit, never touches an enemy, never loses a life, just without getting hit, in like 25 minutes or something, 28 minutes, I don't remember, but less time than I've already been playing. I mean it this time. Getting impatient, so I'm just going for it. Nailed it. Once I hit 900,000 points, that's the last one up you get for points because um, after that, well, the score tops out at 999999, so you're one point away from getting an extra, extra one up. Okay, you think I would learn? That guy's, what, that shark got me like four times in a row there? Three times in a row?
Okay, so one more hit and I'm dead. Hey, you didn't knock me into the spikes at least. Finally, that shark can bite you through the wall, because of course he can. Oh. Well, that took way too long. But now we're at the Rat Race, which is yet another new game mechanic. So this looks similar to Intruder Excluder. But here, it's a race against a rat. And that one, that little gas thing, is on a different interval. So, it doesn't matter. You'd think you'd have to fight that rat, but you'd be wrong. The goal is to reach the bottom quicker than the rat does. So he always runs back and forth left to right, and if you can fall through the cracks quicker than he can, then you'll get to the bomb quicker than he does. And there's three races, and each one gets faster. And the third one literally seems impossible. I practice this level a lot, and I think I finally found the key to beating it rather consistently, but not perfect. And we'll see if I can do it today. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to the bomb and had my leg was in the air to kick it and the rat got there before I did. And so that was a checkpoint we just reached and every if you die here you respawn right as that yellow ball is coming at you and if you're not on your toes it will knock you down. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's the key. If you hit him that one time and knock him over there, that seems to give me enough of a buffer to get to the bottom. Uh, well, unless you do something like that. Okay, and of course there's still a boss at the end, so you gotta hit him like 35 times, I gotta count these, I gotta hit him 15 here before he moves, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, now I hit him and run. Because if he lands on you, that is a one hit kill. And of course, he keeps getting faster. Oh, 
I'm missing my jump. Okay. Now the real fun starts. This next level, Clinger Ringer. I did not... I, I struggle on it for like two weeks and then eventually I beat it and then every other time I played it for like the next two weeks I beat it on my first try and then since then I've beaten it once You have to hit the arrows the, the, on the trail, and if the path turns, you have to hit the arrow almost frame perfect, meaning you have a 1 in 60 chance of doing it to stay ahead of this ball. And I keep pausing it to adjust my thumb. That was the end. get in my head about this level. I'm not doing it.
I've tried different controllers. I've tried pausing it around each turn and shifting my thumb around. I've watched every video online. I've read threads on Reddit. And the consensus is good luck. And as a little behind the scenes peek at how I am playing this game. I didn't want to waste an hour playing if I wasn't going to beat it. So before I turned it on, I threw in the Game Genie, started on this level, and I beat it on my very first try. So I thought, oh, I am ready to play through the game. I slowed down a little around one turn and I saw it happen. I thought that's the end. Like he's too close to me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ha! And now, of course, I gotta fight this thing. I can never remember. I feel like you gotta hit him on the back side. Whatever. There we go.
It seems very unfair to have a boss fight after that insane level. And while the, the last level coming up here is not a cakewalk by any means, this level is the one that takes the cake for the most difficult in the game, in my opinion. Once you get it, it's straightforward, but my goodness, it takes a lot of tries. Already off to a bad start. So there's a game called Castellan or Castellan that I've not played. I own it, of course, because I own them all. Asterix Stadium events excluded. Um, where the whole game is kind of like on this 3D plane like this. This is a very unique uh, last level. Oh. So these guys take three hits to kill, and then at one point they just start taking four hits to kill in this level. I think this is the guy that takes four. Well, we'll never know because I got to start back at the beginning. So if I can get to the top of the tower before I get a game over and get to the final boss of the game, and then I have to continue, I will continue at the boss and not have to do the level again, which is amazing. Oh, there's the one of the next four. Okay, this little guy. If you have the pole, it is much easier. Oh, this is a checkpoint. That guy, if he opens his mouth and sucks you in, that is a one-hit kill. perspective on these things when they're around the 3D space is a little confusing, but you can pick it up. Okay, another one of these guys. And I think this one might take more hits. Oh, no. And my pole. Where'd my pole go? Oh my gosh, I thought he was going the other way. Goodness. So this is the first introduction of the spinning platforms.
just concentrating. Oh. And here, you have to grab onto that pole immediately because that guy will blow you off and it's a one-hit kill. The good news is, though, that gives me my pole back. Oh, and this is the final checkpoint of the level. And you got to bust your butt to get up there because that top one disappears quick. If, you're, if the platform above you is moving, you can pretty much jump when it's like right over your head and you'll be okay. Okay, that's good. And now another one of these. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to do it. Maybe not on this continue. But we can start back at the... Oh, it's Evil Queen or Wicked Queen. You gotta hit her from behind. She always starts facing you, or always lands facing you, I mean. Where'd you go? She's getting faster, which makes me think that she's about to dead. <laughs> Am I ever going to hit her again? Stay tuned. Oh my gosh. She comes up one more time. <sighs> well, would you look at that? That's the first time I've ever beat that game without even continuing. Amazing. And I guess that's my girlfriend. She's human. I'm a toad. Oh. <sighs> 
that's a huge relief. Because now, in five years, when I don't believe that I actually beat this game, I'll have video proof of it. Bye, Toads. And so the Dark Queen is defeated once again, retreating into the shadowy margins of her galaxy to recoup her losses. Until the next time. Alright, thanks for watching.